the body of a television director found next to a camera in studio. Quentin Quarantino. Quite a name. Seems familiar though, no? The crew were setting up to tape a show when they found the body. Not a lot of blood. Some blood on a camera cable, marks on the neck. Clearly a mystery for Flip Marlowe to solve. That's me, Flip Marlowe, sleuth extraordinaire. It's time to talk to some suspects on video. They found the body near a camera, so I'll start with the camera operator. Let's see what she has to say. My name is F Stop. F Stop Fitzgerald. The F is for Francine. F I T Z G E R A L D. Nah, I didn't do it. I wasn't even in the building when it happened. I never bother to show up when they tell me. They ask us to come in one or two hours before taping, and there's nothing for a camera op like me to do for ages, so I show up late. Yeah, so when I got there, I went to the kitchen first. There was nobody there, but there was still some food left. Fried wonton, barbecue pork, bananas, and rainbow sherbet. Sort of a strange combination if you ask me, but hey, calories is calories, especially if they're free. I go on into the studio to check out what's what, and there's Quentin's corpse lying out there, and they're all milling around, and I took a quick look, but corpses aren't my thing. I'd never really seen one. Anything strange, you say? Uh, well, I don't know what corpses is supposed to smell like, but Quentin smelled a banana. Of course, like I said, bananas were part of the meal, so maybe he'd eaten one. Nah, I didn't like Quentin. Just didn't like guy. All the time, marching around the studio, telling people how to do their jobs, and those old school waffle stompers he wore didn't make him easier to take. But nah, I never had a real major run-in with him. But Quentin and Abby. That Abby Reed, the audio engineer, they were always arguing about something. And Quentin didn't get along too good with Squiggly Marks either. That Squiggly Marks the graphics guy? Now that you mention it, Quentin didn't get along with anybody. Except maybe Brinker. I don't know what those two saw in each other, but there's no accounting for taste. Oh, sure, they found the body by a camera. The camera I run. But it's not like there's not other people in the studio. So hell no, I didn't do it. Wow. Fitzgerald is a tough cookie. Sounds like she might have strangled Quarantino with a camera cord. But this is a mystery story, and that's way too obvious. That can't be right. What does the coroner say? Mavis Tender, T-E-N-D-E-R. I'm the coroner for this county. I examined the body of the deceased, one Quentin Quarantino, at 8.30 yesterday evening. White male in his mid-40s, dressed in faded jeans, black turtleneck, and heavy military boots. Wearing no jewelry, unidentified substance found in the tread of the boots. General presentation of the body indicates the time of death was approximately two hours prior, with cause of death being blunt trauma to the back of the head. A skull fracture of this type would likely have caused death within minutes. An extensive amount of blood was found near the injury site in the hair, indicating that the victim bled heavily. A label, such as those found on equipment to identify brand and model, was embedded in the injury. First two letters smudged and illegible, followed by U-R-E-5-2-A. The deceased also exhibited extensive bruising on the upper back, indicative of a fall, perhaps well before death, however. Marks on the neck show that the neck was wrapped tightly, although a lack of bruising indicate that this occurred after death. So the camera cable is a red herring, as I suspected. 
But the coroner said lots of blood, and the crime scene report says there wasn't much. Where did the blood go? Uh, some letters. U-R-E-5-2-A. What might that be? Isn't there a brand of microphone called Sure? Better look that up. Ah, yes, a search for sure brings up lots of pictures of microphones. Sounds like maybe someone clopped them on the head with a mic. Time to talk to the audio engineer. Reed, Abby Reed, R-E-E-D. That's my name. I didn't do it. Sure, me and Quentin had a fight right before the show, but Quentin's an argumentative guy. He'd somehow, get this, got it stuck in his brain to use a 52A to record one of the guests. The 52A isn't even for voices, it's for a bass drum, but Quentin thought the guest had a low enough voice. That's Quentin for you, always sure he's right. Quentin had already gotten the 52A out and handed it to me. Putting it away in the cabinet would have just extended the argument. So I just put it on the counter in the control room. Quinn has started to argue with Squiggly by then. So I went out to the kitchen to see what food there was to eat. Squiggly? Yeah, that's Squiggly Marks. He's the graphics operator. Anyway, Quinn and Squiggly were really going at it when I left. Squiggly was eating in the control room, which is against the regs, but Quinn was being a complete jerk about it, which was Quentin all over. But it was done because Squiggly was only eating a banana. It's not like he was going to spill banana into the equipment. It's not like it was coffee or Coke or something that was going to spread crumbs all over. There was lots of food in the kitchen, and I stayed for a while eating. I love my food, especially sherbet. When I came back, Quentin was dead in the studio. Anything else unusual? No, nothing that I can think of. Except Huntley, she's the show host. Asked for a ride home. She'd forgotten her keys. This Reed dame has an alibi. She was eating, so she's clearly a suspect. Let's hear from Marx. Squiggly Marx. It's not really squiggly, though. Originally, it was Carl. M-A-R-K-S. How else? I didn't do it. Look, I never leave the control room to go to the studio. There's nothing for me to do there. There's cables to trip over and people dropping things from ladders and <laughs> camera operators. Oh, God. They're the worst of humanity. After directors. I have no clue how Huntley got along with Quentin, but she did. Abby always did have the capacity, you know? She could eat a lot. When there was food in the kitchen, she was the first one there and last one to leave. Quentin and I argued. There was always something to argue about with Quentin. This time it was this silly business about whether I could eat a banana while I set up graphics in the control room. So I stuck my head in the kitchen and there was the pork and the wonton and well, not really my thing. I hate the smell of barbecue sauce. So I grabbed the banana and went back to the control room to set up the graphics. After the back and forth with Quentin, I stalked out to the lobby. I sat there and steamed off for a while. Then I went back to finish the rest of my work. I didn't even get to finish the rest of my banana. I think it's time for some physical evidence. Let's see what Sergeant Clouseau has found out. Sorry, Chief, I can't tell you about a microphone. 52A or otherwise, I, they're all locked up in a cabinet. Yes, Chief, I'll, I'll keep trying. Oh, say, Chief, you might be interested to know that uh, I dug around in the garbage in the kitchen and under some banana peels, I found a large number of bloody paper towels. I thought you might be interested in that. Have the lab run a test. Uh, no, I, I didn't do that. The blood was red. I figured that's what you needed to know. 
Clouseau, Clouseau. What academy did he say he attended? Hmm. Onwards. My name? What? Jamie what? Spell that? W-A-T-T, -T, of course, right? I'm the electrician. I'm also the safety supervisor. I was setting up the lights in the far corner of the studio. At some point, I turned around to see if her stop had finally turned up. She hadn't, of course, but that's when I saw Quentin's body. I went over to look. There was a trail of blood dribbled from the studio to the control room. Liquids on the floor are a safety hazard. So I went and got a bunch of paper towels from the kitchen and I cleaned it all up. Then I had a couple of pork ribs and a banana. On the way back to the studio, I also found one of those big bass drum mics on the floor in the control room. That's a hazard too, so I put it back in the cabinet. There was a set of keys tucked right next to Quentin's body when I got back. I left them there. They weren't a hazard, and I figured they were Quentin's anyway. It was a ring big enough for a prison warden. That sort of fit Quentin's personality. So maybe Quarantino was murdered in the control room after all. I'm putting that Marks guy back on my list of suspects. His alibi seemed a little too slick anyway. Uh, by the way, Chief, I found this big ring of keys next to the body. Took me hours of investigative research, but I found the key that opened the microphone closet. And inside, I checked all the microphones, and I didn't see blood on any of them. There was this big microphone that had barbecue sauce all over it. Marx wouldn't have had barbecue sauce on his fingers. At least he claims he didn't like barbecue pork. If that's true, then he wasn't the one touching the mic. But Watt admits to having some ribs and then putting away the mic. That's interesting. Also, Reed had to give Huntley a ride home, and Clouseau just found the keys by the body. Whose keys are those? Hmm. Brinker Huntley. That's B R I N K E R. Oh, my last name. H U N T L E Y. Quentin and I got on great. He just took care of everything. I never had to deal with any of those people who work in the studio. I could concentrate on getting ready to talk to all my wonderful guests. I suppose I shall have to find somebody to replace him. I never carry my keys around with me, they're too heavy. Charles, my chauffeur, always puts them in my purse and leaves them in the kitchen. So I couldn't have dropped them in the studio. Somebody must have taken those keys. A beastly inconvenience. I'm actually very surprised that anybody had a chance to take the keys. Abby is usually sitting in the kitchen from the moment any food appears until all the food is eaten. And usually it's eaten by her. <laughs> but not Quentin. He was just too busy making sure everything was running smoothly to have time to eat before the show. And not like that awful squiggly either. If there are 40 things to eat, squiggly will tell you the reasons that he can't eat 39 of them. But Abby was very sweet to give Charles and me a ride home. I was sure happy when that Sergeant Clouseau returned those keys. It was getting so tiresome with Charles having to climb in and out of my window to let me into my own home. Now, where are we? Reed? Well, the microphone looks bad for her. But it seems she was likely eating when the murder occurred. I love my food especially Sherbert. Marx hated Quarantino, but probably didn't touch the mic that is apparently the murder weapon. 
I hate the smell of barbecue sauce. Fitzgerald, she says she arrived after the murder and Watt backs her up on that. I never bother to show up when they tell me. Watt, she found the body, but it would never occur to her to murder anyone. It would be against the rules. Liquids on the floor are safety hazard. Huntley? Well, the keys look bad, but she's the only one with no motive. She actually liked Quarantino. Quentin and I got on great. He just took care of everything. So what else? What's this? Clouseau is texting me. Perhaps he's found something new. Hey, Chief, I did find one more piece of evidence that might interest you. I was crawling around on the floor in the control room looking for my contact lens. And what do you think I found under the desk by the graphics controller? I found a partially eaten banana. What did I do with it? <laughs> well, Chief, I ate the rest of the banana. Oh, but one thing. There was a big boot print on the banana peel. Of course. So now we know. Quarantino died when his head met a big microphone. Fitzgerald said the Quarantino smelled a banana. But uh, Huntley said that he didn't eat before the show. Unidentified substance found in the tread of the boots. Banana slime, no doubt. Marx admits to having a banana in the control room, which he never finished and which Clouseau discovered. I didn't even get to finish the rest of my banana. So what happened is this. Reed put the microphone on the counter. Marx put the banana on the floor. The deceased also exhibited extensive bruising on the upper back, indicative of a fall. Quarantino slipped on the banana peel and fell on the microphone. Quarantino's lying dead on the control room floor. Marx comes back, doesn't want to be suspected, so he takes the body into the studio and wraps the camera cable around Quarantino's neck. That leaves a trail of blood. So I went and got a bunch of paper towels from the kitchen, and I cleaned it all up. Fitzgerald shows up and it looks bad for her. So she goes to the kitchen to sneak the keys and try and frame Huntley. I wish I'd been thinking about Anton Chekhov. I would have solved this case immediately. Chekhov said, when in act one, you have put a banana in the scene. In the next one, somebody must slip on the banana peel. Next case. Mm -hmm.